the well swamps. There was Leave the King, who had eleven sons and one daughter. The children were happy, but then their father married a weak queen, who did not love the children at all. Soon after the wedding, she turned a picnic into princess into eleven well swamps. With a strange cry, they flew through the windows of the place, high up into the clouds, and away. When the king asked the queen if she knew where the princes were, she merely smiled and shook her head. As for the princess Eliza, all that day she looked for her brothers, but did not find them. Then, at dusk, she saw eleven white mouse flying toward the bedroom window. They flew one behind the other. Like a long white ribbon through the open window and into her room. At sunset, the feathers of the swans fell off, and Eliza's eleven brothers stood before her. As long as the sun is in the sky, we brothers fly about as well swans," said the oldest. Each night, when the sun sinks, we re we regain for human form. That night, Eliza dreamed that a fairy came to her. Your brothers can be released, she said, if you have courage and percent perceive perceiveness. Do you see the nettle which I hold in my hand? Many grow in the, the nearby forest. This you must gather and spin into yarn. F from this yarn, you must knit eleven shirts with long sleeves. If they are thrown over the eleventh ones, the spell will be broken. Be warned, though. The fairy added, "From the moment." You commence your task until it is finished. You must not speak. The first word you utter will kill your brothers. Their lips hang upon your tongue. Then she touched Eliza's hand lightly with the nettle, and a pain like that of burning fire awoke the princess. Close by her lay the nettle. Like one she had in her dream. It was a broad daylight. Eliza's brother had flown away, and Eliza went forth to be begin her work. She went to the forest and gathered many nettles, which burned the great, great bliss, blisters on her hands. She spun the yarn. At the sunset, her brothers returned, and when they saw her hands, they understood what she was doing on their be behalf. The youngest brother wept, and where his tears fell, the pain ceased, ceased, and the burning bliss blisters vanished. Eliza kept to her work. Each day, she patiently knit one shirt after another. When she needed the more yarn, she gathered the more burning nettles and hastened hastened back to the castle. Each day at dusk, the brothers would return to visit their sister. The next day, when the sun rose, her brothers would again become well surrounded and fly away. But one morning, the queen spied spied eleven swans flying from Eliza's window, and the groom worried. The next morning, she crept to Eliza's room just at dawn, before the swans could fly away. She threw a a giant net over them. 
She had the men haul the swans to the、uh, dark, dreary cell deep in the castle's dungeon. When the sun set, the day no one could hear their humans cry. Elisa found them though, and they continued to knit through the dark nights outside to their cell door. Then the queen announced that there was a marvel, marvelous and the giant feast, roast bird for everyone in the castles. Only Elisa knew the truth about the feast, and she could not speak it. Instead, she continued her task, knowing she must finish quickly, or all her work would be in vain. The morning of the feast, her fingers still knit the green yarn. Ten shirts lay in a pile at her feet outside her brother's prison cells. She was working hard on the eleventh shirt when the men came to hold the cell door. Eliza threw the eleven shirts over the swans. They turned into eleven handsome princes. The youngest brother shirt was not quite finished. However, he was left with a swan's wings wing. Instead of an arm, the king was overjoyed to see his missing son's return. When he learned the truth about his new wife, he sent out guards to arrest her. On her throne, they were a vulture. The queen was never seen again.